If you guys are anything like me, you want a live updating stock portfolio tracker in Excel, but you are too cheap to pay for the Microsoft 365 subscription, well, don't worry. I'm gonna walk you through how you can build a beautiful looking portfolio tracker just like this, completely for free that pulls in live data. Now let's get started. In order to follow along in this video, you're going to need a free Gmail account. If you don't already have one, it's very easy to sign up. Once you've got your Gmail account, you can Google Google Sheets and it'll take you here. And then you'll hit sign in and we're gonna pop up with an untitled, completely blank spreadsheet. Let's begin by changing the name of our spreadsheet to stocks. And there's three things we're going to wanna find. The prices of the stocks. We also want the price change. So this is gonna be just the one day change in the stock price. And then last, we want the market cap. And here is where you would put your own stocks ticker symbols. I'm just gonna use these ones here as an example um, of the companies that we're using. And then we're gonna start by finding the price. We're just gonna use the inbuilt formula, Google Finance, so equals Google Finance. And then we're just gonna select that ticker right there and hit enter. And then that tells us this stock's uh, price for just its current price. And then I'm gonna double click that arrow right there and it shoots the formula all the way down. So now we have all of their prices. If we want the one day price change, we're gonna do equals Google Finance. Again, and we're gonna select um, it, where it says ticker, this ticker, and then comma. And then for attribute, we're just gonna put in quotes the word change. So that tells us how much this stock's price changed over the last day. And then I double click this arrow, right click, and it shoots the formula all the way down. Finally, we want this company's market cap. So I'm gonna do equals, and then once again, Google Finance, where it says ticker, I'm gonna put this ticker, uh, com uh, comma, and then in quotes, I'm gonna type market cap, no spaces in between, then I'll hit enter. So that tells me this company's uh, market cap size. Now that we have the data we want, we'll go to file, share, and then publish to web. And then we're gonna select entire document and we'll change this here from web page to Microsoft Excel file .xlsx, and then publish. It'll say, are you sure you wanna publish this selection? We'll hit okay. And then we will just hit control C on the keyboard to copy that entire link. Now open up a new completely blank spreadsheet and go to the data tab here and then hit from web in the get and transform data section. We will hit control V on our keyboard to paste the URL for your Google doc right in here and keep it on basic, then hit okay. Now, when this pulls up, we are going to select sheet one and then hit load and it will pull the table of data from uh, Google right into here. So now we have our data and then we're going to want to write hold our mouse over this and then hit those three dots right here and then select properties. And this will allow us to make sure that the data updates live as quick as possible. So we're gonna check refresh every and then we'll hit one minute. And then we'll also make it so that it refreshes the data when we open the file and we'll hit okay. And then if you wanna rename the sheet, again, you can hold your mouse over here and then hit edit and then right up in the top right corner where it says name, we'll just change it to Google Stocks. And then we'll hit close and load. Now that we have this live updating data, let's go and make that beautiful dashboard that I showed at the start of the video. So we're gonna go back to the blank sheet and I'm gonna start by just pasting in some column headers. You can type these in at home, or if you wanna save yourself some time on all of this, you can purchase the files that I created in this video in the link in the description. But don't worry about all of these right now. We're gonna go through one by one and I'll explain what each of them mean. The symbol is just the stocks ticker. So I'm gonna do equals and we'll go back over to our sheet where the data is and hit equal to that and enter. And then I'm just gonna drag it all the way down so we get all of those stocks. I'll delete those last empty rows. 
And then we're going to have to grab the names of these companies. Now I'm just gonna paste the name and the sector in because I had them already. So I'll make this a little bit wider. Um, if you're wondering where to get these, you can get them from Yahoo Finance. And I'll show you as an example with uh, just Walmart. So that's WMT is a symbol. So I'm gonna to go to Yahoo Finance and in the search bar, I'll type WMT, Walmart pops up, I'll click on that. So there's the name. And then if I go to profile, I can see that the sector that this company is in is the consumer defensive. We want to find whether these companies are large, mid or small caps. A large cap company generally has a cap size over 10 billion. Mid is generally between 10 and 2 billion and small is generally less than 2 billion. We can find this out using this data we pulled in from Google Sheets. So I'm gonna select this market cap column. I'm gonna change it to the dollar format. So what this tells us is that Walmart's market cap is 382 billion. Let's convert this into something that's easier to work with. So we'll say market cap in billions. And then this is just equal to this cell divided by 1 billion. And then I will just drag this formula all the way down. And then I'm going to rename this sheet. We'll say, we'll just call it um, Google Data. And we'll come back over here and we're going to write a nested if function to determine whether it's large, mid, or small cap. So we'll say equals if. Uh, this value right here is greater than 10. That will be large. However, um, if that's false, then we'll check if this value is greater than two. If so, that will be mid. And finally, if it's not, it will be small. And then we're gonna have to put two parentheses. So we know that this is a mid cap company. Now I'll drag this formula all the way down. So we know we've got one mid, two smalls, and the rest are large cap stocks. The next two columns are manual inputs that you will input yourself based on your own portfolio. I'm just gonna go ahead and paste in some examples right here. So what we're saying is that we own 400 shares of this company stock and we paid a price of $69.41 per share. So one thing I want to do to help us uh, just make sure we know what's manual inputs and what's automated uh, formulas, we're gonna go ahead and highlight all the manual inputs and we will change these to a uh, light yellow color. And then all the ones that will be um, formula-based cells, we're gonna change to a light blue. So I'm gonna highlight all those values there and I will change this to this light blue. Now, in order to calculate the amount paid, it's simple. We're just gonna take the number of shares and multiply it by the price that we paid per share. I'm gonna change this to the accounting format and I'm gonna get rid of these decimals because we don't really need to know the cents right now. Um, and then I will just drag this, the bottom right corner of that cell all the way down to paste it to, so we can see how much we paid for each of these. And then in order to get the current price, it's quite simple. We're just gonna do equals, and then we'll take for this AMBA, since it's the first one, we'll put it in this cell B2, enter. Again, we'll change it to the uh, accounting format, and we will just drag this value all the way down. Let's make this column a little wider so we can see everything. And then in order to find the uh, total value of this whole portfolio, we'll do equal to the number of shares that we own of each stock, and we'll multiply it by the current price per share, enter. Again, we'll make it the accounting format and we'll drag this all the way down. Then I will make this a little bit larger and get rid of these two decimals so we can save some space here. And now to find how much have we allocated of our total portfolio to each stock, we're gonna have to create a row down at the bottom and I'm gonna call it total. And I'll hit control B on my keyboard to make this bold. And then I'm just going to take um, equals to the sum of, actually we need to find the total value of the portfolio. So here I'll do equals sum and I'll highlight this entire range and let's make this one bolded as well. And then I think we might also want to find the uh, total amount that we paid. So let's paste that formula, control C and then control V over here. And then to find the amount we've allocated to each of these 
um, stocks, we're going to do equal to the total value of that stock and then divide it by the total value of the portfolio. I'll hit F4 on my keyboard just to make sure that I lock in this cell and we'll change this to a percentage and I'm going to drag it all the way down. So we can see that we've allocated that percentage to each of these stocks. And now let's get into our total gains and losses. This column here will tell us how much we've gained or lost over the total period of time that we've held this stock. So I'm gonna do equals the total value and subtract by the amount that we originally paid, which tells us that we've gained over $9,000 on this stock over the course of the time that we've held it. Some of these others we did not do so hot on. So we want to find the total gain or loss in percentage terms, which is just going to be equal to the total gain or loss divided by the original amount that we had paid for the stock, which tells us we gained 35.2% return on this stock. Now let's find how much have we returned in dollar value over the course of just the last day. That's going to be equal to the price change that we pulled in from the Google Sheets data. And we're going to multiply that value by the number of shares of this stock that we have. We'll hit enter. I'm gonna drag this all the way down. So we've lost $644 on that stock today. Now we wanna find the one day uh, return in percentage terms, which is just gonna be equal to the current price of this stock divided by the price that this stock started the day with, which is just gonna be equal to the price plus the uh, price change, or actually subtract the price change and then we'll subtract by one to get it into percentage terms. So we know that this stock has had a negative 1.69% return over the course of the day. Let's take a quick look at our total gains and losses for the entire time we've held the stocks. So we have lost $5,670. And then over the course of the last day, we have just lost $3,100. So not a great day for us. We're gonna to wanna to see very quickly which stocks we have gained or lost money on. We want the winners to be green and the losers to be red. We can do this by selecting this whole range. And we'll go up to conditional formatting and hitting that arrow. And we'll say highlight cells rules. If it's greater than zero, we're gonna to go to this drop down arrow right here and hit custom format. Make sure you're under the font section. And then for the color, we're gonna hit this dark green. Okay, and so we can see that all of these here that are winners are uh, green. Now we're gonna see a lot more red on this portfolio. So I'm gonna again select the whole range, hit conditional formatting, highlight cells rules, and then less than zero. And then for this one, we can simply hit this arrow and then hit the red text, okay. So we can easily see which ones we have gained or lost money on. We have all the data we need. Now let's make our table look a little bit nicer. I'm gonna highlight all the column headers with my mouse and then I'm just going to select the thick outside borders. I'm gonna do the same thing with the whole table. And then lastly, I'm gonna do the whole thing with the total row, thick outside borders once again. And that's looking a bit nicer. Now I wanna give a nice background to um, just the, the column header. So let's go and change our fill to just a light gray. And then again, I wanna go to view and I'm going to get rid of the grid line. So I'm gonna uncheck this box. I think it just makes everything look a little bit nicer. Now let's get started creating those pie charts that I showed at the beginning of the video. And I wanna see, have a pie chart that shows me what percentage of my portfolio is allocated to each stock. So I'm gonna highlight this uh, first column here, just the values there, and I'm gonna hold control on my keyboard, and then I'm gonna select this whole range of the allocation percentages. Then I'll go over to insert, and where this pie chart icon is, I'm gonna hit that down arrow, and then select that 2D pie chart. I'll drag it down here, and then I'm gonna make it just a little bit larger so we can see and work with it more easily. Let's change this title to uh, portfolio allocation and i'm going to make that title bold by just highlighting that box and hitting Control b on my keyboard and i kind of want to make the text a little bit bigger so i'll make it size 16 font now i'm going to select this pie chart there and go to chart design and i want to change the design of it i kind of like this one right here but so you can see i see all these tickers but i also want to see the percentages 
here in the allocation. So I'm gonna click on one of them, make sure they're all highlighted. And then I'm going to go to format. Actually, let's go to add chart element and then data labels, more data label, label options, and let's check value. So now we can not only see the ticker of each stock, but also the percentage that's allocated to each of these. I want to add two more pie charts just to make this look better. One is gonna be based on the cap size of the companies, and another is going to be based on the sectors in which the companies operate. In order to do that, we're gonna to have to add one more sheet to help us out with these calculations. Let's rename this sheet to our dashboard. And then let's add one more sheet, and this is just gonna be our helper sheet that helps calculate everything that we need. Like I said, we're gonna be looking at market cap and we're gonna be looking at sector. So let's make a table here called cap size. And there's three types for this. We have a small, we have a mid, and we have a large. And we're gonna have an allocation percentage here. And then we're also going to have one based on sector. So first let's find the uh, allocation to small, mid, and large, which is gonna be equal to sum if. So first we're looking at our range that we're gonna be basing our criteria on, which is this range right here. So I'm just highlighting the whole thing. And then I'm gonna hit F4 to lock it in place, comma, the criteria is going to be equal to this value. So small, and then comma, the sum range is the actual allocation percentage. I'm hitting F4 once more to make sure that range locks in place. Then I'll hit enter. So we can see that 20, uh, 20.3% of our whole portfolio is allocated to small, and then 21.7 for mid, etc. Now we want to find out sector. So I'm just gonna copy all of these values with Control C on my keyboard. I'll come over here and paste special, just the values. I did that by right clicking. And then we're going to wanna get rid of the duplicates. So I'll go to data and then remove duplicates and continue with the current selection. So, okay, remove the duplicates. So now these are all our total sectors. And then again, we're gonna do equals sum if the range is going to be equal to these sectors. I'll hit F4 to lock it in place, comma. The um, criteria is this value right here, comma. And then the sum range is going to be equal to, once again, our allocation percentages. I'm hitting F4 to lock it in place. Enter. So we can see that 41.7% uh, of our portfolio is allocated to technology, and then the rest is allocated to these areas. Now let's create a copy of our original pie chart, and we will just paste it right over here. And we're going to right click on this pie chart and do select data. And we're gonna edit this series of values. So instead of looking at that allocation percentage there, we're gonna go down to our helper file and grab this allocation range and hit okay. And then we're gonna edit this horizontal axis labels category. And we're gonna change this one over to these labels here. We'll hit okay. Now let me delete those out of there. Select that, hit okay and then once again hit OK. So we can see that um, the certain percentages into small, mid, and large cap. I'm gonna make this font a little bit bigger so we can see it better. And then let's, um, let's rename this uh, cap size allocation. And then once more, let's create a copy of this graph. We'll paste it right over here. And then this one's gonna be based on the sector allocation. So I'm gonna change that to sector. And then we're gonna right click, uh, select data. And then on this series one, we're gonna hit edit. We'll delete these values out of there. And instead we'll select this range, okay. And then we'll change the horizontal uh, category axis labels by hitting edit. We'll delete that and we will select this range hit okay, okay, and then now we've got these over here. The labels look a bit goofy, so let's just go back up to chart design and let's change it to a different chart. There we go. We went back to the original one, and I'm gonna select these labels and I'm just gonna make the font once again a little bit bigger. And so now 
Again, I want to see the labels, so I'm gonna go to chart design, add chart elements, uh, labels, data labels, more data label options, and then let's hit values. And this is looking pretty good. Um, I think I'm just gonna move this title a little bit over here so that we can see that auto manufacturers. And now we've got all three pie charts and we can see that if any of these prices change, um, all this will change live. So let's say instead of having 2,500 here, we just had 1,500. We can see how all the tables change automatically. And then also let's say if the price actually, instead of being 93.85 was just $85, we can see everything shifts a bit. So this is just an awesome updating live portfolio in Excel that is completely free. Um, if you Again, if you wanna buy this file, check the link in the description. If you wanna book time with me for either tutoring or for consulting work, please hit the link in the description for that as well. Thank you so much for watching this video and subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate it. Have a nice day.